Okay, so this is a DC motor. Uh, I'm going to start out with measuring the couple of batteries that I put in series. And of course, should come out with three volts, and it's 2.99 volts. Now I'm going to hook these to the DC motor. give the rotating part an initial push, there it goes. So I'm putting electrical energy in and I'm going to get mechanical energy out of it. I'm trying to make it as fast as possible, I guess. I don't think that goes any faster, does it? That's probably a tough point there. Okay, um, I'm going to measure the um, current here in just a moment, but first I'm going to determine how fast this is rotating, and that's why I used the strobe light for. I put a black piece of tape on there, um, so that when I use the strobe light, if you could turn off the light, then I can see. Okay, um, here I kind of have it standing, I don't know if this shows up on the film. Uh, pretty close to standing here, but I see the tape twice. That means I catch it um, twice per rotation. So I'm going to go to double the rotation. There we go. Oh, that's pretty close. Okay, now I could have the light back so I can read actually what my frequency is. I'm at. Um, 2,000 rotations per minute, and of course I have to convert it per second, so divide 2,000 by 60. I need a couple um, other numbers to, to work with. One of them would be the current, but for that one I have to unhook the batteries because I have to measure the current inside the circuit. Here we go. Let's see. Don't record this just yet. 1 1.18, 1.07, 1.08, 1.12, 1.10. So it's jumping a little bit around, but I want a 1.2, 1.17, somewhere around there, probably average maybe 1.15 amps is what I get from this one. And then I have to take one more measurement which is what is called the stoppage time. And what I do here is I put a certain amount of energy into it, but of course, <coughs> excuse me, due to the law of inertia, the thing would just keep rotating, but of course it loses energy due to friction. That's why I need to put in more energy. So by measuring the amount of friction that slows it down, it also will tell me in return how much energy I need to put in, uh, respectively that it's using up. So I'm going to stop this one here and count the seconds and that stoppage time then eventually will tell me how much energy it's using up, which in turn will tell me how much energy it needs to be put in. Okay, and this was going to be in the neighborhood of just a couple or three seconds or so. So if you could look at it and kind of give me a good estimate how many seconds it needs to stop. Okay, ready? Here we go. One, two, three. Yeah, about three seconds. That's that's what I figured. Okay, with that, I'm I'm actually virtually done here. Just one more thing, um, I have to look at my rotating part here. It of course takes takes energy, and I may not want to call it kinetic energy. I may want to call it rotational energy. Um, but rotational energy depends on the shape that I have, and that's a cylindric this a cylinder um, with a rotation axis through the middle, and that's what I would have to look up um, in the in the book where it says that a rod whose axis goes to the middle takes on a, a moment of inertia of 1 12th the mass times the radius squared. On the left sheet itself, um, the mass is already listed for, for the rotating body, for the rotating rod here at 107 grams. We need that because um, rotational energy, any kind of energy, um, depends on the mass of, of the body and I had taken that apart a long time before and measured that. 
Um, the radius of it is respectively the, the length is 50 millimeters in this case. And then pretty much we have everything else and we can do all the calculations. Okay, thank you.